We're going to be making a little submarine. It's going to be something like this, eventually. But let's start with a constraint. This little submarine is actually going to be a uh, shuttle of a larger submarine that I have, which means it needs to fit in this red, um, red rectangle. And um, I decided I'm just going to grab a whole bunch of them, uh, a whole bunch of items, and see if it kind of somewhat fits in here. Because if it doesn't, then I need to make this rectangle bigger, and then I need to change the larger submarine. Um, but before we start, let me actually go through some of the, the buttons real quick. Uh, load, open. Uh, if you press this, it will open up this. So now you're inside a submarine. And then you can hit escape, return to editor. And the only time you can open up the submarine is, is if you have a spawn point. So in here I have this spawn point. Spawn points look like this. Spawn point. Just drop it. Uh, I'm going to go through spawn points a little bit later. Okay, so uh, I have a constraint. I just added a whole bunch of stuff in here. And it kind of seems to fit, roughly. So now let's go through the shell. Um, as you can see, there's no shell here. So I build a shell. How you build a shell is you do this shell. You just type in shell like that. And now you have all of these shapes to go with. There is a difference between this shape and let's say this and some glass thing. So this has a max health of 200. Shuttle stuff has a max health of about 100. And uh, glass has a strength of 50. And this is just a horizontal line that has a, has a strength of 75. Um, you can change that strength if you want. So for example, this glass over here, I want it to be able to see. I just change that to 200 um, so it doesn't break all the time. So uh, I grabbed the shell, shoved it all in there. And then I, I grabbed some doors just like this, and you grab it, and you drop it. And ideally, your floor, between your floor and your ceiling is a door just like this, uh, or that's, that's a typical height. You can change the size of a door by going here, going to scale somewhere, where is scale, scale, here. And you can change the size of the door, just like that. Um, ladders, you can add, and this is a hatch that you should already have. It's called the auto, this one automated docking hatch. Uh, this comes in uh, with every game. Uh, I'll show you guys more a little bit on how to work with that. Okay, so I have a rough shape. Let's add some stuff to it. Uh, if you just start typing, you know, reactor right here, then you can just drop a reactor. Uh, I made mine a little bit tiny. And you need a reactor, an engine, some junction boxes, guns, navigation, the status monitor, Ballast, stuff, suits, oxygen, uh, fabricator, deconstructor, uh, and a super capacitor. So shoved it in. It looks kind of okay. So then uh, it's time to add hulls. How you add a hull is you do this. You add hull, and then you can straight up just draw a square. It might be hard to see on YouTube, but there's a square right there. So that's a hull. And your goal with the hull is to have them all touching each other. Let's turn off the view so that you can just see just the hull view like this. As you can see, they're all touching each other. There is no gap in between any of them. And ideally, when you're putting in your hull, you do not hold uh, shift. So let's see what shift does. I'm holding control, and then I'm dragging, and then I'm letting go of control. So I make a copy of that. Um, so if you want a shape to snap to grid, I'm going to try and move it. It snaps like this. If I hold shift, I can move it more smoothly. Uh, same thing is true with a hull. So I'm just going to drop a hull like this. And over here, when I hold shift, I can make this hull whatever size I want it to be. But if I don't hold shift, it kind of snaps into grid. Um, I see a lot of troubles with submarines and hulls and stuff. And it's probably because they held shift or they, there's, there's just a gap right there uh, because they held shift. So for example, if I just do this, if I hold shift like this, then, then there's a gap right there. But if I just let it snap to grid, there's no gap. Um, all right, and then there's a special number with these hulls. So in this case, I'm going to select all three. I'm, ho I'm holding control, and I'm selecting all three of them. And there's going to be a number right here. And because of my, because of my weird submarine, because I actually have many here, uh, I don't see a number yet. But in your submarine, you're going to see a number. So this is my ballast. Um, the number that I had was 0 0.3816. 
And then I go here to the navigation terminal. I scroll down to uh, one of them, this one, steering. Uh, and I just put that to 0.3816. Okay, so that's the hull. Next up is <clears throat> more hull stuff. So touching each other, yep, I did that. Um, if on edge, so let's do this, let's do gaps. So this is also showing the gap. And as you can see, when I move this door down like this, it's, if it's on the edge of the next hull, you're going to see this exclamation mark. Um, if I just press up on the keyboard once, then all of a sudden, this door connects one hull to the other. Um, I usually try to play it safe and give it extra pixels up um, just because I, I found that that, you know, that solves some issues that I have. Another thing is with is, is gaps. So let's go gap like this. And uh, so this room has actually a bunch of rectangles that I have because it's a weird shape. And I want to connect these rectangles together using gap. So if I press gap and I, uh, I click and hold, now I have my gap and I can, you know, I can, I can create a gap in between um, two different hulls. If you don't put a gap, water will not flow from this box to the other. Water will just be straight up contained. Um, I also uh, select this hull and I hold space and I left click onto this hull and then onto this hull. That means whenever you're looking at the status monitor, this is going to show up as one big hull instead of three tiny ones. Uh, another thing to keep in mind with hulls and ballast is this is my, my pump, my ballast pump. Um, the highest hull is the hull that you should put your pump in. What does that mean? So this is my largest hull. I'm going to put another hull like this. Now you might think, okay, th that's no problem. The water can go in between like that. Uh, there seems to be a bug with the game where even though you want the water to keep going up, the water will stop right here on this edge, even though you're trying to pump it in um, from, your, from your nav controller. Now, if you do it manually and manually pump it in, it will go up. But this means uh, you won't be able to actually sink your submarine because you've, you've set it up like this. So keep in mind, the tallest hull is the hull that you should put your uh, ballast in, and then the water can flow to the right, and then this water can flow to the right. Um, and then I realized that I'm going to have a very complex door right here because this is a hatch door and these are just uh, button doors right here. Uh, yeah. And I wanted to be able to open this hatch. So I created, I'm not going to show you guys this circuit, but I just created a button with relay so that this, this thing will open. But if I'm docked, it will behave like a docked door. Um, to try it out, I added a submarine below me. So in this case, I added the Hemulin. So what I did was I click here, I click the Hemulin, I left click down here, and then I, I, hold sp I, I have the Hemulin selected, I hold space, and I left click on this green area, not the door, but this docking port right here. And now this Hemulin is connected to this docking port. This way, when I press play, I'm actually docked to the Hemulin. Um, Let's see, gaps, connections, tallest hull has pop, buttons override switch. Um, so I realized, yep, I can totally override the switch, which is good, I have that working. Now what I want is for uh, these doors to interact more intelligently. I suggest when you're starting out your submarine to not do what I just did right here. I wanted a bit of a challenge for myself. So what happens here is whenever this door is opened and any of these doors are open, then these three doors will close. Uh, whatever one is open will close. And then if this door is open and somebody opens one of these three, then this door will close. This way, the whole submarine doesn't get flooded. And that's it for uh, the basics of hulls. Uh, we're going to go through electronics next.